Out on the course I have selected six holes that give a flavour of what Lipbook has to offer. A real challenge given the overall quality of the course. In 2020, five new holes were opened and I've included three of these in my selection. These magnificent new holes greatly enhance the layout of this wonderful course and add a new level of fun, drama and strategy for members and guests alike. The fourth is the second of the par fours and certainly not the easiest at 460 yards. The hole has everything a designer would be proud of. A generous fairway, but one that pinches in around 250 yards from the tee and that leaves a small target for the long hitters. A good drive is essential to set up the approach, which is to a green that's 31 yards deep. Herein lies the work of a top-class architect, as not all of these yards are available to the golfer. Anything shy and a touch left will catch a swale and trickle down a slope. The same fate awaits anything which is long and right. That leaves a small piece of putting surface to aim at, and the premium is on trajectory and control. A four here often feels like a birdie. The par 5 seventh at 502 yards is Heathland Golf at its very best. A vision of sheer beauty to any golfer, but it has many challenges. The first of these is to find a fairway that tilts in the opposite direction to the shape of the hole. The average hitters may choose to lay up short of the burn, which lies diagonally across the heather, but the longer hitters will relish an opportunity to find a green that is higher than the fairway. Three bunkers are embedded in the face of the rise, so no prizes for being short. To accommodate the difficulty of the approach, there is ample room beyond the putting surface that is 35 yards from front to back. I've seen many majestic par fives during my travels, none are more elegant than Liphook's seventh. The eighth hole is known as Pulpit, and the first of the new holes to feature in this selection. It's a gorgeous little par three, measuring 176 yards from the tips and seven yards shorter from the members' tees. The hole is framed by vibrant purple heather and towering Scots pine trees. The whole of the green is visible from the tee with a strip of fairway just short should you prefer to run the ball onto the putting surface. That surface is 34 yards long and slopes ever so gently from back to front. The green is guarded by a tall lone pine on the left and two bunkers short and front right. These bunkers have heather eyelids on the top edge, which harks back to pictures of the original rugged Heathland design from the 1930s. The championship pin position is tucked into the narrower section at the back of the green, so you've got minimal margin for error if you go flag hunting. Anything long or wide of the target is likely to find itself amongst those glorious pines. A birdie two here is one that will live long in the memory. The final hole on the front side is a 363 yard par four that dog legs from left to right. It may appear simple in the scorecard, but there's a decision to be made off the tee with plenty of hazards waiting to punish errant shots. The safe play is a shot at or just left of the single fairway bunker that sits 257 yards from the back tee. Anything that slips too far to the right can be blocked out by the pine trees on the inside of the corner, but the further left you aim, the shorter your tee shot needs to be to stay in the fairway. The further left you go, obviously, the longer your resultant approach will be. The hole is framed by a beautiful wetland area on the right-hand side of the approach to the green, which will catch any weak shots. There's also a smaller water hazard behind the bunker. It's very much in play. The green runs quite steeply from back to front, and it's angled away from front right to back left. A deep bunker on the left will capture any shots that are pulled to a front left pin position, or coming up short when the flag is located in the back section of the green.
The back nine begins with a 431 yard par four that's as testing as it is attractive. For the big hitters, the bunker on the right of the fairway and the wide part of the pond on the left, at 280 yards could force you to lay up short, but then again you've got the option of threading your drive between the two. The water actually begins just behind the first Scots Pine at 210 yards, so it's very much in play for most golfers. A tee shot just short of the bunker should leave somewhere in the region of 160, maybe 170 yards to the green. The best angle for your approach shot is from the left half of the fairway, as this leaves you a clear opening between the two bunkers that jealously guard the green's entrance. Play it too safe off the tee and bail out to the right, and you'll likely have to fly your second shot over an intimidating bunker just short of the putting surface. A stand of Douglas trees and a tumulus a raised ancient burial ground form an impressive backdrop to a green which is actually a lot larger than the clever mounding and bunkering makes it appear from the fairway. I warn you to be careful here. This is one of the strongest par fours in the southeast of England, and as beautiful as it is, it's a potential card wrecker. The final offering is one that will stay long in the memory. The par 5 18th is 465 yards. The average length player will drive just to the top of the rise, but for the longer hitters, it's a blind tee shot. Heather flanks the fairway both right and left, and once over the hill, the fairway slopes from left to right. That leaves a very small target to aim at. The layup is far from easy as four bunkers covering 80 yards lie to the right side of the green's approach. That green is 29 yards in length, tilts from back left to front right, and is also two-tiered. And a word of warning here, putts from beyond the hole are devilishly quick. It's a closing hole that befits the quality of this magnificent course, and the charming yet understated clubhouse awaits just a few steps away. There are few courses in England that can match what Liphook has to offer. Now at 6,500 yards off the tips, whilst not long by modern standards, it offers a real test to any standard of golfer. Designed by AC Croom and Tom Simpson in 1922, and recently remodeled so successfully by the excellent Tom McKenzie, they have left an indelible legacy for golfers to enjoy into the next century and beyond. I'm often asked if I had one course to play for the rest of my life, what would it be? If it was this Heathland gem on the borders of Surrey and Hampshire, I'd be a more than happy golfer. I often realize how privileged I am to be a member. Thanks again for your time and I hope you've enjoyed this short guide to lip hook. When your time comes to play it, I'm sure you'll take home many pleasant and many happy memories.